This video is going to demonstrate how to read from a MySQL table using PHP and display it on a web page. I just want to go over my setup here for this demo. Right now I am using the XAMPP setup for the Apache web server. Um, I have my control panel here and I'm going to hit start to get that going. That's not required. You could do this and, and publish directly to your web server if you'd like, but I'm working with a local host. I'm going to minimize that. Since I'll be using localhost, I am going to be working out of my htdocs folder in my XAMPP installation. And inside of that folder, I created just www to put my individual projects inside because there are a few other things I'm just avoiding. And inside of that today, I will be working in a folder called display. So already I have put my um, connection PHP files in there. I've demonstrated how to use that in a previous video and I will include that in the links in the description. So jumping over to brackets, I will be going over to file, open folder and selecting that folder that I created. So I have display, I'm going to select that. And I'm also going to be setting up my project settings to a my local host to the folder that I created. So that is localhost. I've got my W's because I created that folder and also a display folder. And that will allow me to preview locally. Now that that's all set up, I'm going to go ahead and start my file. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and start a new file. And I'm going to go ahead and save it right away. I'll go save as and into that folder, I'm going to be displaying a table of CDs that I've created. So I'm going to call this um, CD display that PHP. Now inside of that, I'm going to want my basic HTML code set up. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. A handy place you can get that is htmlshell.com. I like using that just so I can easily grab this, but you can certainly go ahead and type this too. Now let's take a peek at the file that I'd like to display. I'm jumping over to my MySQL workbench and I also have another video on how to work with that. I can put a link to that in the description as well. And I've already connected and here's my database. It's called Retzer S and inside there I have my tables and the one I'd like to display to the web I called CD list. Now let's view that. I'm going to right click and say select rows limit 1000 and I just have a few rows of some bands. So I have the ID which is my primary key. I have band name which will list the band name. Their album and genre. So I'm keeping this pretty basic. So I'm going to leave this this as is, but I'm going to go ahead and minimize. I just wanted to give you an idea of what information I'm going to be displaying to my web page. So in the body, I'm going to go ahead and do my opening and closing PHP tags. And inside of that is where I'm going to be putting all of my code. Today's process isn't going to be terribly creative. It's more about following a formula that um, MySQL wants. So I'll be connecting to the database. I'll be writing a query and checking to see if there's information. And if there is, I'll be displaying it. So it's, it's just a matter of going through that process. So the first thing I need to do is connect to my database. And I'll be doing that by using require once. Now the difference between require once and include is that if this doesn't work, the script will get killed right away instead of um, continuing on and, and creating errors. So without the database, this page really wouldn't do anything. And then I'm going to put in the connection string that I will be connecting to the database with. I covered this in a different video, but I'm going to jump over to show you what this is. Now this is an external file I created. There's, this isn't a magical name. I just called it dbcon as in db connection or database connection .php. Now I have one with my actual login credentials and I'm not going to show that, but I've got one here as an example. And pretty much to create this, you just create a file, do an open and close PHP tag, just so that somebody can't op easily open this up. It will be stripped out if they try to open it. 
and you're just defining your username, password, and database server. So your username and password are for the database and the name of your database here. So you just change those items there and they do are in the single quotes. And then this database connection string is created and then it can be used through multiple projects. So once this is set up, you can use this and just simply copy over your database connection string. So I'm using this, this was created in a, a different project I demoed on another video. So I'll be including that using require once. And then I'm gonna go ahead and my, write my query. And my query is gonna be pretty basic. So if you notice, I'm storing my query into a variable called Q, and all it's doing is selecting all from CD list. And CD list is the name of the table that I would like to display. And just to be sure, I'm gonna jump over to Workbench. Notice that it is called CD underscore list. They need to match exactly. Then I'm gonna go ahead and run the query. Now this is just stuff you go ahead and type in. Um, pretty much what this is doing is it's taking the database connection string we created and the query we created and it runs it and it puts it into R, which will be the result of that query. Now we only want to display if there are records returned. So let's check to see how many rows are returned. And I'll be doing that by creating another variable called num. And it's checking how many rows are in R that I just ran. And what I'm gonna do is make an if statement, checking if there are more than zero rows returned. So if there is at least one row returned, I want to display that here. If there are no rows returned, I'm going to echo to the screen, there are no records. And notice I'm putting HTML formatting in with this. So at this point, we want to display the rows here. To do that, we're gonna be using a while statement that will loop through each row and display them. So before we continue, I wanna talk about what this does. What does MySQLI fetch array do? It's going to take the result and it'll take each row and convert it into an array of values and put that into row. Now let's talk about what that will look like. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing is dealing with an array. An array is a little bit different than a variable. So if you think of a variable, it can hold one value. So if you think of a folder, you could put one value into it. And an array is more like an expandable folder that can hold multiple values. So with a variable, I could have something called username, and for instance, it could hold a name like Mike. But an array, it could hold something called user, and inside of that, there are several indexes that will hold different values. And to access that, I would write the name of the array and then the index in brackets. So for instance, user name will return Mike. And user email could return Mike at gmail.com. In our case, our array is going to be the entire row that's returned and each index is going to be the field. So in our case, we will have a row with an index of band name, album, and genre. And it will go through all of the rows until there are no more. So this while loop, as long as there are rows, it will return it into an array called row. When it runs out of rows, it will return none and exit the while loop. So let's display that. We can do that using echo. And then we type row. And then in square bracket and quote, what row we would like. Now just to test it out, let's try band name. And it needs to match exactly to our table. So notice band name is one word and we've got that there. So let's just try this. And what it should do is echo band name for each band in the table. So I'm gonna save this and when I run it, it lists off all my band names. Now notice there's no formatting here, so we need to put that in as well. 
So let's put that into our echo. Now you can add that into the same line with concatenating, or I do find it a little easier to keep track of by putting it in a separate line. So for instance, I could say echo paragraph around this whole thing. And then each band name will be in its own paragraph tag. Let me save that and see what it looks like. So that's a lot easier to read. Now we can add in additional information. So once again, I think it's easier just to put it in its own echo line instead of concatenating everything, but it's really up to you. So here I could have the band name, album, and genre. Now I probably want something to separate those. So I could also put in, let's say, a line break. And I could put it in as a separate item or I could concatenate that on. So I'm just going to concatenate it to the end since that's pretty easy to read still. So I'm going to say dot and then in quotes, just a break. And I can easily copy that and put that to the end. So let me go ahead and save and try it again. So there we are with our band, our album, and genre. If we want to have this in any other order, we simply change the query. So for instance, there is no particular order to the result we have. So I could alphabetize it by band name. And I can do that simply by changing the query by saying order by band name. Let me save that and look at our result. And we've got it started now. Asylum Streets Bankers is fine, goes into the D's, and now it's alphabetical by band name. I could also narrow it down by saying, I only wanna see ones where the genre is rock. Now I kept the order by band name, so it'll still be in order, but it will only show it if there is a genre called rock. Now this needs to match exactly. So I'm going to double check my database, make sure there are some. So notice I have some rock. So a couple of these should come up. Actually, I should only get two, it looks like. And now only two are coming up. Now our database still has all the information, but it's only displaying the things I asked for. And I can simply change that. Let's say I want to see all the alternative. And when I save it, now it shows the alternative albums. You can also format this better, and I do have to say I'm pretty terrible with CSS, but here is a basic formatting you can do. So for instance, let's say I have, um, I'm just gonna paste the style into the head area here. So I simply have a couple of sections. I have um, name is going to be, a little different than the details. So I could have the name of the band and then the details be something else. And then down here, I can simply add in some spans of what classes I would like it to be. So for instance, I could have the band name be of class name. So I'm adding a span of class name and I can end the span after that. So in between there, band name will be of class name. And then I can make the rest of class details. So now the name should be of one format and the album and genre should be another. Let me save that and let's take a look. And it looks a little different. So you can also use divs or whatever other CSS formatting you have, you can still use and display there. So you're not limited to to just plain text. But once again, CSS is not my strength. I am better at the programming logic side of things. So in summary, this is a pretty short formula to display. What you want to display will be changed in your query and how you want to display it will be changed in your while loop.